When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It's especially well when we gather on Sunday mornings. Let's prepare our hearts as we listen to Victor play the prelude.
Thank you, Victor. Good morning, church. Those of you here, those of you online, we're so glad you could join us today. I'd like to open with our, um, with the, the Lord be with you. That, let's open that way, and also with you. And then we'll, we'll stay seated for our responsive call to worship. Uh, my part will be in the yellow, your part will be in the white. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. And with the fire. Thou, the anointing spirit art. Praise to thy eternal merit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now Johanna will come give us a hymn story. Good morning. Good morning. Many of you may remember Larry Moss and um, him quoting often A.W. Tozer and, um, no, J. Vernon McGee, I'm sorry, who uh, said, well, things are going just about the way the Bible said they were. Now, while that may not give you a whole lot of encouragement, I hope this will. <laughs> Samuel John Stone is the author of today's hymn, The Church's One Foundation. He was born on April 25, 1839, in Whitmore, Staffordshire, England. He was an Oxford College graduate who eventually pastored two London parishes. He was known as the poor man's pastor because, quote, he created a beautiful place of worship for the humble folk and made it a center of light in the dark places, which was most notably in London's East End. He also loved writing poetry and was inspired to write The Church's One Foundation when liberal Bishop John William Colenso wrote a book questioning whether the Pentateuch was historically accurate. He steadfastly believed that the church should unite and rely on the lordship of Christ over the church, not on man's views or interpretations, and he refused to back down from his firm and scripture-based personal faith when he started to see more liberal thought invading the church. The poem was paired with the music of Samuel S. Wesley, also a graduate of Oxford and grandson of Charles Wesley. And the hymn became so popular that it served to unite Anglican bishops throughout Great Britain who gathered in London for a historic theological assembly known as the Lambeth Conference. Throughout church history, it has become necessary for committed men and women of God to defend the church from those who want to attack and destroy it with non-biblical doctrines and practices. This morning's hymn can help us to also unite around the principles we know are true and right. Often hymns have been altered and some verses have been lost. Here is Mr. Stone's original third verse, not included in the hymn we know, that can offer us hope and resolve in the days ahead. The church shall never perish, her dear Lord to defend, to guide, sustain, and cherish is with her to the end. Though there be those that hate her and false sons in her pale, against the foe or traitor, she ever will prevail. Please stand as we sing.
Uh, we'd, we'd like at least one more person to join the praise band because on those hymns, when there's, when there's only Peggy between me and Gary, that's, that camera thing is right there in the words. So I sang a wrong word there because I couldn't see what it was written up there. So sorry about that. <laughs> totally, totally my fault, but I'm like, what? I had no idea what that word was. Okay. So this week, uh, for the, the church in our community, it's kind of our extended community, we're praying for a church in Santa Fe called Hope Unlimited Church Santa Fe. And I didn't know much about this church, so I went online, and uh, it turns out they are very international, and they seem quite modern in their approach. So I, for one, am glad that they are up there in Santa Fe because that being the, the capital of our state and with all the things that go on in our state, uh, it, it's probably good that we have blessed people near the center of power. So let's pray together for, for these folks. Uh, the pastor is uh, Larry De La Garza. His wife is Rachel, and they have two children, Adeline and Maverick. So let's go, to, let's go to the Lord for this church. Dear God, we thank you for the ministry of Hope Unlimited Church in Santa Fe. We ask that you would bless them, that you would strengthen them mightily, that you would inspire them and give them a powerful worship that would draw your people unto you, that you would grant them grace to serve the community they find themselves in, that you would hold them together as a pastoring family, you would bless each of the members there, and we just pray that you would fill their pews and fill their hearts with nothing but love for you and your son Jesus. And it's his name we pray. So please stand. The wonder of it all that loved and died for me. Oh, the wonder of it all is death brings life to me. Into the darkness, the precious light has come. A broken and weary world, God gave His only Son. Oh, the wonder of it all! Oh, the wonder of it all! Amazing love! Oh, the wonder of it all! Amazing love! Oh, the wonder of it all! creator would give his life for you and I you know he thinks we're precious <laughs> I don't know how you think about yourself this morning I don't know how your week has been 
But I will say that the Father thinks you're amazing. You're his child of great value. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's wonderful. You are the light, huh? See, we are the people of God. The sons and the daughters of love. Forgiven, restored, and redeemed. Living our lives to the praise of our King. We are the ones who will shine. There's light in the darkness of night. Hopeless, the broken, the poor. They will be hopeless and broken no more. And you are the light. Light of the world we shine you Lord You are the light the light of the world we shine you We are the people of God the sons and the daughters of love We're given restored and Living our lives to the praise of our King, we are the ones who will shine. His light in the darkness of night, the hopeless, the broken, the poor, they will be hopeless and broken no more. And you are the light, the light of the world. You are the light. You are the light. Light of the world we shine. You, Lord. You are the light. The light of the world we shine. You, Lord. We shine like stars in the universe. Proclaiming the hope of our God And to the sons and daughters in all the earth We shine, you Lord, we shine We shine like stars in the universe Proclaiming the hope of our God oh, yeah. And to the sons and daughters in all the earth We shine the light, the light of the world, and we shine you, Lord. You are the light, the light of the world, and we shine you, Lord. And you are the light, the light of the world, and we shine you, Lord. You are the light, the light Let us open our hearts and our minds and be humble before the Lord. It is God's unfailing love that moves him to forgiveness. So let us unite our hearts in confession and open them up to receive the forgiveness he is eager to give. Merciful God, you call us to be salt and light and to live as your righteous holy people. We want to, Lord, but we fall short. We confess that there is good and bad, light and dark within our own hearts. We want to do what is right, but our fears and anxieties lead us to self-protection rather than vulnerability, to hoarding rather than freely sharing. 
to self-righteousness rather than compassion. Forgive us, O God, restore us by your mercy, that having received the gift of your infinite love, we might turn to our neighbor and give your love away. For the sake of Christ, we pray, amen. And let us hear the words of assurance. God's forgiveness is freely extended to all who in faith repent, hear and believe the good news. Jesus Christ forgives all your sins. Hallelujah, amen. Please stand. Kind of fun watching Matt bounce between the two, don't you think, Skip? You're my first love, Jesus. Just a minute. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Look, I was laughing, and I saw John walking down, and I just got, like, started that song in the wrong key completely. Thank you for the little grace. My bad. You're my first love, Jesus. Only want to dream of. You fix my broken pieces and overcome my weakness. So strengthen me to follow, follow, Lord, wherever you lead. Take my life, my Savior, and bless the one who's living in me. You're my first love, Jesus. The one I hope to dream of. You pick my broken pieces and overcome my Oh, show me how to love, Lord, the kind of love you offer to me. Oh, let me know your power as I walk with those suffering. You see, our good Lord is holy and true. He longs to work through me and the rise of now is glorious bright and let his love be our only guide you're my first love you're my first love jesus the one i hope to dream of you pick my broken overcome my weakness let your wisdom flourish oh let your wisdom flourish when the loss is all encompassing the heart of new creation let your body crush the enemy oh, you're my first love one I hope to dream of. You fix my broken pieces and overcome my weakness. You're my first love, you're my first love, Jesus. The one I hope to dream of. You fix my broken pieces. And overcome my weakness. You're the best, Father. Father, I pray that we all would get dreams of Jesus. Father, I pray you would visit us. Share your heart with us. Just like this morning, your word will come and it'll fill us. It will water us. We love you, Father. We love being part of your family. In Jesus' name, and they all said, 
Amen. Would you share the peace of our Lord Jesus with one another? Okay, if we could all find our seats, we'll continue. So much fun. There'll be more hugging and greeting after the service. If you didn't get your fill. Okay, a couple of announcements. We have a, a concert this afternoon. Charles McDaniel is going to be performing. That's uh, always a good time. A couple of things to sign up for. Um, Nothing really that striking, so let me take a moment, because if I didn't, my wife would tan my hide to, uh, to celebrate the, the veterans in the room, my, my fellow veterans. So if you are a veteran, if you could please stand and be recognized. And... With that, if everyone would please stand, we'll do our doxology. I have the reading from the book of John. I just wanted to share with you, um, several years ago I received a challenge of how many times to read the Bible. I had a friend, uh, some of you might have known, and he had read it 10 to 11 times. I'm, I'm way behind, I'm only at four and a half, but uh, I did bring my Bible to prove it, that it's, <laughs> it's hanging in there, but. So uh, the book of John, John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with him, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. 
the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him and to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because, of, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. The word of the Lord.
Have you ever received an email or which is really long and you just really want to find out what's important so you don't have to skim it all? This is an important thing that you need to act on and you need to understand. So you need to understand and, under, and act on those facts. There are other things going on too. If you look at these new movies coming out, there's usually a movie trailer. It's called a clip to grab you, to get you to say, I really want to go see that movie. All these things that are in front of us. The first section of John referred to many commentators as the prologue is really short, but it has really many, many important facts simply and clearly stated that we need to act on, that we need to embrace, that we need to go forward with. A couple things about the book of John, and I'm sure all of you have read it and looked at it. It's quite different from the other gospels. It's very unique. And I hope that you will cons consider studying this book beyond those first 18 verses we're going to look at today. Another thing in this book that's really important is John never refers to himself as John. Every, every reference to John is really John the Baptist. He always references himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And I think if he could look forward to today, he would take that song that Gary sang earlier and led the praise band, the wonder of it all, he could never understand. He wasn't being arrogant. He was saying, you know, I just can't believe that God would love me. The wonder of it all. That should be a wonder for us as well. So what I titled this is the big picture. This kind of sets this, the tone for the entire book of John. And actually what happens in this first 18 verses is revealed and enumerated and exposed and expanded on in the rest of the chapters. And it's really exciting because what John takes it to a level that we need the big picture. So let's look at the big picture in the first 18 verses and I will teach this in three parts. First, there's the revelation, and it's a big deal. I mean, it is high. You know, you can't get beyond those first verses and question, ask that question, who Jesus is. The second one is the responses to this revelation, which again is revealed even further in the rest of the book of John. And finally is the reality confirmed by John himself, John the Apostle. So what we have is this, this really unique section of the book and John is very purposeful in what he is doing here. And I love the first verse. It says, in the beginning. Does that ever sound familiar to you? In the beginning. So he takes creation and brings it to the New Testament and the word himself. Now it says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So what you see here is, one, the word is eternal. And he was with God in the beginning. He was with God. He didn't, you know, come there. He was there before time began. Time began when creation started. And how was creation done? Through the word. God's word. The word in the Greek is called logos. And it was familiar in the first century that had both theological uh, significance to the Jews and philosophical significance to the Greeks. But John is taking this to the next level, right? He's taking it to the ultimate level. He's trying to give us the big picture of the word. And a little bit later, it says the word became flesh. So we see the connection between the word is Jesus who became flesh. And we see this big picture that John gives us in these first verses. So the word was God and he amplifies this concept. So that means what? He is equal with God, he is separate from God, and he's eternal with God because he was with God in the beginning, it's repeated. John is very rep repetitious. And, you know, I don't know about you, but we all learn by repetition, don't we? We need to hear it over and over again. Well, John is not going to miss that. He's going to continue to drive this home for us. So the nature of the word is given in these first few verses. And then it says in verse 3, all things were made through him, which not only was he with God, equal with God, separate from God, but he is also creator with God. And in Genesis, there's a phrase that says something like, and God said, we should make someone in our own. He said, not say, I will make someone. He said, we will make someone. And he's referring to, as we know, the Holy Spirit and Jesus and God the Father. So we have this glimpse that Jesus is not only 
the word, equal with God, eternal like God, separate from God, but also the creator. All things were made through him. And then this next picture comes up, and I'm going to unfortunately have to put some glasses on to keep close to this. He says, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. So another key phrase here that John brings up is life and light. And he's talking spiritual now, right? We, we sang that song, you are the light of the world. Jesus is the ultimate light, and we are called in Matthew to become part of that light as well. So the life is eternal life. The light is spiritual light. But the darkness has not overcome the light. And so this is a picture that John gives again throughout. What you're going to see in, in the Gospel of John, if you look through it, light, life, darkness, and light. And he's not talking about physical darkness. He's talking about spiritual darkness. And the light overcomes darkness. Now, we can think of light uh, in our own lives, right? We can think of light being something that when you, you've got to turn on the light to see things. But in the spiritual sense, light and darkness can be together, right? There's darkness around us today, but there's also light today. The spiritual light that we have and the world embraces darkness, but it says the light overcomes darkness. And that's really important. And again, uh, this is a familiar theme in John. There's the light. And so in these first five verses, I want you to take away this principle as they put up already. And it's a little, uh, there you go, thank you. Jesus is God. And he's co-creator of all things. And again, he is the perfect light of the world. So the question I have for you is, who do you say Jesus is and how do you describe him? And a little bit later on, we'll be talking about that as well as the way John prescribes or, or describes Jesus. And we're going to see that. But how do you describe him? And I thought it was very interesting. You know, Advent actually starts in a couple of weeks, but I was in, in Walmart yesterday and they were pr playing uh, Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas. And it's very interesting, right? Uh, as, as Christians, we sometimes forget what cr Christ came. The word became flesh the co-creator of the universe, equal with God, became man for us. We should never forget that. Well, what are the responses to that? So we have this, this big revelation about Jesus, and it starts with John. And this is John the Baptist, not John the Apostle. So here's the fact, and now it's been proclaimed by John. It says, there came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all men might believe. So the purpose of testifying to the light is for people to believe and hold on to that light and life, which is Jesus Christ. It says, he himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. And that's our job too. Uh, we sang that as well. That's in Matthew where it says, you are the salt and light. That means you bring spiritual light into people's lives, and we are charged to do that. And John was very clear. So John, this is John the Baptist. People came to him, and they were wondering, who are you? Are you the Christ? He said, no, I am not the light. I'm proclaiming that the light is yet to come, and the light is greater than me. He'll talk about that later. And that's our job, too. Did you ever talk to someone and expect to be remembered for telling them something? the most important thing they can remember is that you told them about Jesus and they forget you, but they remember Jesus Christ. And John was good about that. He kept on saying that I am not the light, but I am come as a witness to the light. And that's what, something we're called to do as well, a witness to the light. When somebody says to you, have a great holiday season and you can return and say, I hope you have a blessed Christmas and bring Christ back into Christmas as we celebrate his coming. He says, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. So John, remember John, this is John the Baptist. He was talking about the fact that he was a precursor to Jesus. He knew he was coming and he was telling him he's coming. The Messiah is coming. 
The promised one is coming. Promised in the Old Testament. The promised one is coming. So with that as an introduction, John is giving all this. How do people respond? Well, he was in the world. And though this is verse 10, oh, the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. So one, we have John proclaiming the light. We have the world not recognizing who Jesus is, even though the world is made by him. And again, in other scriptures, you'll see that one of the downfalls of man is they tend to worship what? The created things instead of the creator himself. And that's in Romans chapter 1. Then it goes even further. It says he came to his own, but they did not receive him. And you know who his own were? The Jews, right? Why, why, why were they his own? Because they had the revelation of the Messiah coming. So the Messiah comes, and because he didn't fit the mold that they thought he should have, they didn't recognize him. Now, I will say not all the Jews uh, did not receive him, but the majority did not. Another word that comes up in John is receive. The other word is believe. Receive and believe. Light and darkness. God's love versus man's love. So we have those John proclaiming. We have those in the world that did not respond. We have the Jews who didn't receive him. But he says those who received and believed, they have the right to become children of God. Do you ever contemplate what that means? So it says again in verse 12, receive him, believe in him, in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. What a concept. The genealogy is gone. You become a child of God, not a grandchild, a child of God. Men and women, slave and, and, and free, Jew and Greek, male and female, become children of God. And the implication of children is you become an heir to the inheritance, which is reflected in many of the letters that Paul writes as well. And John the Apostle is very clear. And he says this, he says, look, this ch children is not through what? Natural descent, human decision, or husband's will, but born of God. And so what that means is there's nothing you can do. It's from God himself. And what's really interesting is later on in John, he is visited by Nicodemus at night. Nicodemus comes, and what does Jesus say to him? Uh, he, uh, Nicodemus says, oh, you're a great teacher and all these things. And then Jesus says, well, you've got to be born again. That's not, that's not what he wanted to hear. We need to be born again. We are born once physically. We need to be born spiritually. And this is, again, is revealed later in the book of John in a more, more dramatic fashion, in a more... Um, uh, precise fashion than what is gripped here. But what we see is, again, we have, here's the big picture who Jesus is, and here's the responses to him. And we are part of the response. We can be in the light, or we can be in the darkness. And there's no in-between. There's no shades. There's either light or darkness. Or you can be like the world around us. It says, I... I, I just don't recognize who Jesus is. There's going to be those who know the scripture, but don't know Jesus. In, no, in this time and place, it was the Jews who had the Old Testament, had all the things pointing to this Messiah, but they didn't see him. And then there's those who embrace it, who accept it, and become children of God. What an exciting thought, isn't it? Become children of God heir to the inheritance that God gives us. So the principle that I, I say here, that Jesus is the true life, light, and through belief in him, we become children of God and receive life, eternal life. So you have some of the facts. How have you responded to those facts? 
my hope is that you continue to read the book of John and see more details about these things that John talks about. And then John in this first section, he, he really confirms this. And he, as I said earlier in verse 14, he says, the word became flesh, so it links back to the first verse. And actually, if you look at this very carefully, it's got a very interesting, these first 18 verses have, has a very interesting construction. And some of the commentators lay it out very nicely. But now it links back to the first verse. So not only was he was with God, he was separate from God, he's eternal like God, he's a creator, now he's became flesh. And that's Jesus himself. You notice he doesn't say Jesus here. He says the word. He's elevating this into the high picture that we had in the first section. The word became flesh and made his dwelling with us. And it connects back to the beginning of, the, of this gospel where it says, the word, the word, the word, logos, the high theological meaning and the uh, meaning to the Greeks as well, the philosophical meaning. And then he says, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now we also see that Jesus is also full of grace and truth. Aren't you glad that he can't run out of grace and that he is perfectly truthful? And that's why we read his word, isn't it? Because we know it's the absolute truth. And we know that whatever we do, can't, he can't run out of grace. His grace will supersede anything we can do that's not right. So he came from the Father, full of grace and truth, so Jesus, the word who became flesh, became man and on this. And then he says in, in verse 15, John testifies. And John, again, is John the Baptist, not John the Apostle. John testifies and cries out. He says, when they came to him, they kept on asking him, are you the Messiah? He said, no, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Say that 10 times real fast. John is very good at taking something and, and ha having you have to really think about what he's really talking about. What is he saying? Jesus is, is eternal. He was before I ever was. He's before any of us ever was. He is eternal. Not only was John not the light, but the light was eternally present. The perfect light. From the fullness of his grace, we have received one blessing after another. And this is John the Apostle talking now. Could you say that as well? Can you say that we have received blessing after blessing? Just as John said. And then he says, I'm going to supersede what the Jews thought in that day. The Jews really focused, of course, on the law. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now, there was always grace and there was always truth. But the ultimate grace and ultimate truth came through Jesus Christ because the law, you couldn't hold on to the law to be saved. And so this is Jesus, full of grace and truth. God who became man, God among us, God with us. In the last verse of this section, it says that God has made himself known through Jesus. No one has seen God. People wanted to see him. Moses wanted to see him desperately. And what did he say to Moses? No, you can't see me, so I'm going to hide you. I'm going to walk by you, and you're going to get a glimpse of, this, of the light. But Jesus, the man, the God who became man, revealed the Father of grace and truth to all those around him. And it says, but the one, but God, the one and only who was at the Father's side has made him known. Of course, when John wrote this, Jesus was gone. He was already ascended into heaven. So he's also saying now, Jesus is back by the Father's side. And we all know what he's doing there, right? He's interceding for us today. He continues to do his work. He continues to do that. So I hope that you enjoyed this. The principle here is Jesus became man and grace and truth came through him. Have you experienced God's grace and God's truth? And the question now always is at the end of this section, at the end of this prologue is, 
who do you say Jesus is? Is he just a good prophet? Is he a good man? Or is he God incarnate? Equal with God, creator with God, a God who became man to give us light and life. This prologue gives us a glimpse of the big picture of what John is going to unfold in the rest of his gospel. Note that John is one of the few gospel writers that really gives his purpose, which is in chapter 20. He says this, I'm going to read this to you, verses 19, uh, excuse me, uh, verse 30, 30 and 31. This is John saying this now. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and by believing you may have life in his name. So John actually gives us the purpose of him writing this book. And what is the, the big picture? That you will receive and believe Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior that your life will be transformed by the light, that you will live in the light, that you will shine the light. And as we sang earlier, that you will have a wonder why God could love any of us, but he can because of Jesus Christ. As we sort of finish today, I have one final thought for you. You may have come to church for a, a number of different reasons. Maybe to be blessed, maybe to be blessing, but I want to say this, as children of God, you are blessed in many ways. Yes. I hope that you can realize that. John also says this too. This is also in, verse, in chapter 20. He says this. This is in response to Thomas, right? Thomas wanted to see Jesus. He said, I'm not going to believe until I see him, until I put my fingers. I'm not going to believe that Jesus is alive. And Jesus says this. Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. And you know what that is? That's us. We've been blessed. Can you say you've been blessed? I have not seen Jesus personally, but I believe and I have received. And Jesus calls us blessed. Let's pray. Lord, you are indeed a God who loves us. Lord Jesus, you are the word, the word who became flesh and dwelt among us. And Lord, you shine that light in our hearts and we ask that you would continue to shine that light in our hearts. Then in addition to the light that you shine on us, that we would become a light for you. And Lord, help us embrace what you have given us. Help us take this Understand that we are blessed. Understand that we are to be a blessing. Lord, help us reveal that light to those that don't know the light. And Lord, help us hold firm to, the, to what you have shown us through a season that can be very distracting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So now we come to our time in our, in our worship time as our offertory where we give back to the many th a portion of what God has given to us. And this prayer is this. In the coming of your Son, O God, we have received the spirit of wisdom and understanding of counsel and power, of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Use all that we say and do and use these gifts we offer now to be instruments of your peace upon the earth. Amen. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I 
I'm here and I know you will feel me. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the hearts, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down, spirit, when you move, you make my heart down. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. congregation go forth into the world rejoicing in the Holy Spirit may he fill and renew you the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all amen let us go forth in the name of Christ Thanks be to God. 
worship the king. No, no. I'm just giving you the big picture. Great policing is wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilion in splendor and girded with grace. Oh, tell of his might, oh, sing of his grace, whose robe is the light and canopy space. His chariots of wrath, the deep thunder clouds roll, and dark is his path on the wings of the storm. You alone are the matchless king, you alone be all majesty, your glories and wonders, what tongue can recite? Yeah. 